In this video, I'll show you the top 10 things that beginners want to know how to do in Affinity Designer. Let's get started. The very first thing beginners want to know is how to make a new document. To do this, come up to the File menu, and then select New. Over on the left, Affinity gives us presets for common document sizes. But instead of using a preset, let's make a document with custom settings. From the Layout tab, we can choose the document's width, height, and document units. I'm going to change the document unit from inches to pixels. Then I'll change my document size to 2000 by 1400. Next, let's come to the Color tab. From here, you can change the color format of your document. Most of the time, RGB8 is a good one to use. You can also turn on transparent background if you want to have a transparent background instead of a white one. Okay, now let's come to the margins tab. You can see what the margins will look like in the document preview. But most of the time I like to turn margins off because I think they're a little distracting. And finally, there's a tab for bleed and scale. But those are pretty advanced features, so you don't need to worry about those. And now that we've chosen all of our settings, we can press Create to start our new document. Now let's move on to the second thing beginners want to know, which is how Affinity Designer's interface is organized. The interface is broken into four main areas. You have your tools over on the left, the toolbar at the top, the context toolbar underneath that, and the studio panels over on the right. Let's start by looking at the tools. We'll practice using some of the tools throughout this video, but the important thing is to notice what happens when you select different tools. If you look in the context toolbar, you'll notice that it changes every time I select a different tool. That's why it's called the context toolbar, because it will give you different options based on the context of what tool you currently have selected. In contrast to that, we have the regular toolbar right above the context toolbar. This toolbar has some important options that don't change when you select different tools. We'll learn about some of those options later on in the video. And finally, let's take a look at the studio panels over on the right. There are around 20 different panels in Affinity Designer, and they offer a wide range of functionality. But you usually don't need all of the panels, so by default, Affinity hides the less important ones. In fact, most of the time, you only need three of the panels, the color panel, the stroke panel, and the layers panel. So to keep my interface tidy, I like to remove all of the panels besides these three. To remove a panel, just click and drag on its name, and then press the X to delete it. I'll continue this process to remove all of the other unneeded panels. Our workspace looks a lot cleaner now, but how could you bring back those deleted panels? To do that, just come to the Window menu at the top, and then click on the name of the panel you want to restore. Or if you want all of your panels to go back to the default, come down to Studio, Reset Studio. Okay, now let's learn the third thing beginners want to know, which is how to make shapes. We can easily make shapes by using the shape tools that come in Affinity Designer. There's the rectangle tool, the ellipse tool, and the rounded rectangle tool. But there are actually more shapes than just these. If you press on this little triangle, then you'll open a large list of shape tools for making things like stars, hearts, and triangles. To use one of the shape tools, all you need to do is click on the tool you want to use, and then click and drag to make that shape in your document. And if you hold down Shift while clicking and dragging, then your shape will have an equal width and height. 
But what makes the shape tools really special are these little orange nodes. Almost all of the shape tools have these orange nodes, and they allow you to customize the shape. You just need to click and drag on the orange node, and you will instantly change the appearance of your shape. Or if you want to be more precise, you can enter an exact value in the context toolbar. This does the same thing as using the orange node, so you can use whichever method you prefer. Now let's learn the fourth thing beginners want to know, which is how to use the move tool. The move tool is the black arrow at the top of the tool list. It allows you to move, resize, and rotate things. To move something, all you need to do is click and drag on it. And to resize it, just click and drag on the nodes that are on the edge of it. And to rotate it, use the node that's floating above it. And during all of these things, you can hold down Shift to modify your changes. By holding down Shift, you'll keep your rotation in 15 degree increments, like rotating by 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, etc. Or if you hold down Shift while resizing something, then you'll resize its width and height equally. And if you hold down Shift while moving something, then you'll move it in a straight line. And as a little bonus tip, you can press on the magnet icon in the toolbar to turn on snapping. Snapping will make lines appear as you move things around. These lines will help you to snap your movements to precise locations, like to the center of the document. Okay, now let's learn the fifth thing that beginners want to know, which is how to add color. To do this, just pick a color from the color panel. Then whatever object you have selected will be filled with that color. But it's important to know that every object actually has two colors. These two circles represent the two colors of the object that we have selected. The green circle is the fill color, and the black ring is the stroke color. The fill color is the main color of an object. It's the color that fills the center of it. The stroke color is the color that goes around the outside edges of the object, its outline. It's easy to see that this object has a green fill color, but where's its black outline? Well, we can't see it right now because by default, objects have a stroke width of 0 pixels. To increase its width, we need to come to the stroke panel. From here, we can easily increase the size of the stroke. Now we can see the black outline, but it's kind of swallowing up our square. Luckily, there's an easy fix for this. We just need to change the order of the stroke so that it's drawn underneath the fill of the object. Now we can make the stroke as big as we want, and the fill will always look the same because the stroke is being drawn underneath it. But I'm going to make the stroke a little smaller, just because I think that'll look better. That's looking good now, but what if we want a stroke color besides black? Well, to do that, we need to come back to the color panel. Then we need to click on the black ring, and now we can pick a new color, and it will be applied to the object stroke. And if you want to change the fill color, just press on the colored circle, and then pick whatever color you want. Now let's learn the sixth thing that beginners want to know, which is how to understand layers. If we look at the layers panel, we can see that each of the shapes is a separate layer. You can easily turn layers on or off by pressing on the little circle to the right of the layer. And if you hold down Shift, you can select multiple layers. Then you can turn them both off and on at the same time. And if you want to deselect your layers, just click on any blank area. Another important part of layers is that they stack on top of each other. For example, if I move this rectangle over, 
You can see that the square covers part of it. That's because the square's layer is above the rectangle's layer. If you want to change which layer is on top, all you need to do is click and drag to move its layer. And if you ever want to get rid of a layer, you just need to select it, and then you can press the delete key on a Mac or the backspace key on a PC. But I actually don't want that layer deleted, so I'll undo by pressing Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC. I want to keep both of these layers so that I can show you the seventh thing that beginners want to know, which is how to combine shapes. To combine shapes, you first need to select both of them. So I'll hold down Shift and select both layers. Then we can use Affinity's Boolean operations, which is just a fancy way of saying Affinity's tools for combining shapes. There are five Boolean operations, but the ones you'll use most often are the Add operation and the Subtract operation. First, let's take a look at the Add operation. This option allows us to merge multiple shapes into one. Now both shapes have merged together, and we only have one layer in the Layers panel. But I'll undo that by pressing Command-Z on a Mac or Control-Z on a PC. Then we can take a look at the Subtract operation, which works like a cookie cutter. Now the square has a chunk cut out from it, because the area of the rectangle was subtracted from it. But I'll undo that to show you something important. I'm going to place the squares layer above the rectangle, and then select both layers. Then, once again, I'll use the subtract operation. But this time, our end result looks very different. That's because the Boolean operations will act differently depending on which layer is on top. In the case of the subtract operation, whichever layer is on top acts like a cookie cutter, and the layer underneath it acts like the cookie dough that's being cut. And if I undo the subtract operation and use the add operation instead, you can see that the merge shape is gray instead of becoming colorful like last time. That's because the merge shape will always inherit the color of whichever layer was on the bottom. Okay, now let's move on to the eighth thing that beginners want to know, which is how to add images. To add an image, you can use the place tool, which is the tool that looks like a picture. From here, you can select any photo from your computer. Then click and drag to place the photo. And just like shapes, a photo can be moved around and resized however you want. But one of my favorite parts of photos is that we can sample colors from them. For example, I love those orange feet and I want to make my shape that color too. To do that, we just need to click and drag on the color picker, and then we can sample any color from the photo. Then if I select the shape, I can apply the color that I sampled with the color picker. Now let's learn the ninth thing that beginners want to know, which is how to navigate inside the document. To do this, press Command plus on a Mac or Control plus on a PC. And as you might expect, you can press Command minus on a Mac or Control minus on a PC to zoom out. And if you hold down the spacebar key, you can click and drag to move around. Then if you press Command zero on a Mac or Control zero on a PC, the document will perfectly fit to your screen size. And finally, it's time for the 10th thing that beginners want to know, how to save and export your work. To do this, come up to the File menu, and then down to Save As. This will save an Affinity file, which you can open later if you want to continue working on your design. But if you're finished with your project, then you can come down to export. 
From here, you can export your work as a photo that people without affinity can open. From the top of the dialog box, you can choose the file type that you want to use. There are a lot of options, but most of the time you should use PNG. That will export your work as a high quality image while maintaining a small file size. Then come down to the bottom of the dialog box and press export. From here, you can save the photo onto your computer, and then you're ready to share your wonderful creation with the world. Great job! I know that was a lot to learn, so to help you remember all of it, I made a PDF summary of this video. You can download that in the video description, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.